Hey there, Nick Tutakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over ignoring using sudo in a shell script if you're already running as the root user. Basically, we're going to be overriding sudo in a script, and we'll see whether or not if Dwight approves of using this pattern here. But this can be very, very useful if you wanna run a command or a set of commands as root outside and inside of a Docker container where sudo might not be available. Now, this is going to be one of those videos where we are going to be going over a text version of this post. I wrote this one out a little bit before. It will be hosted on my public site by the time the video is out. I'll leave a link to that one in the description. But I think it's gonna be a little bit easier just to see some written form here because we're gonna go over some use cases and, and maybe some hypotheticals here. But we are gonna jump into a terminal, run some commands, break things out, and see how they work here. But yeah, let's start with the use case now, which is uh, pretty specific, but I think like reasonably common here, where let's say that you have a shell script that installs tools to user local bin. You know, this is typically an area on the file system that you'll need root access to write to, but your script also wants to install tools with something like pip. This is Python's package manager here, where you may want to use the dash dash user flag, which is going to install those tools in your local users, like local bin directory, instead of the systems versions of Python. You know, that's pretty nice because it avoids polluting the system version of Python. You know, you kind of don't also need to use virtual environments here. But uh, yeah, the takeaway here is you want these pip tools that are installed to be in, let's say, the Nick user or whatever your dev box happens to be, not root. So you have this mismatch or not mismatch, but you have this combination of wanting stuff to be run as root as well as non-root. Uh, not only that, but you want this script to work on your main system as well as working inside of Docker where sudo won't be available. Now, if you're using something like the Debian official image on the Docker Hub, the slim variant, that's my uh, weapon of choice here. Sudo isn't installed by default. Of course you can install it, but typically I don't install sudo into any of my Docker images. You know, I'll either run my containers as the root user or, you know, throughout the Docker file, maybe I'll switch to a non-root user to run something like a web process. I've done videos about that one in the past. But I really very rarely, if ever, use sudo to do some privilege escalation inside a container. Now, in terms of real world use cases here, this came up recently where I wanted to install tools like kubectl, Argo CD, and a couple of other infrastructure related tools here to use a local bin, but I also wanted to pip install a couple of packages as well as a non-root user. And this is basically uh, to fulfill the requirement of having an install script to help onboard developers who are using either Mac OS or various distros of Linux, but it also needed to work inside of Docker because our base uh, CI image is something that we can set up here and it's a custom Docker image that I've created here. And I wanted these tools to be installed and available on that environment as well. And I wanted those tools to use the exact same version as uh, whatever developers had locally. So, you know, I wanted to have this, you know, install tools script here, be able to be used to set up both environments there. So, you know, when you lay all of that out, you kind of have this problem where you need to solve the problem of wanting to run certain commands with sudo but you only want to actually invoke sudo if you're not already escalated as the root user. So we're gonna go over a couple of ways to solve this one here, um, you know, this way and this way and the third way. But yeah, let's start with uh, the case that could have been a lot more straightforward, right? If we didn't have the requirement to actually pip install some local packages here, this would actually be no problem whatsoever, right? You know, your script could install and copy files to use a local bin here, and it would just be expected that you run it with sudo, like sudo, you know, install tools or whatever on your personal machine. And then inside of Docker, you just wouldn't need to prefix using sudo here because you're already running as the root user. And then your script wouldn't need to internally reference sudo at all here. So yeah, the advantage here is like your script doesn't actually need to use sudo for a bunch of different commands here, you know, you know, assuming you were like moving or copying a binary to there. And uh, I actually like that a lot because it feels less rude, right? Either the script fails because you don't have root privileges and you can't write to use local bin, or you've explicitly given the script permission to write to use local bin by using sudo as the end user, and then everything just works. Seems uh, pretty nice there. But yeah, sometimes real life happens and uh, you kind of can't use that ideal solution because of specific use cases here, uh, in which case you can do something like this. And we're also gonna go over an alternative way to this as well. Also curious to hear what you may think after hearing both of these options here, let us know in the comments below here. But uh, yeah, if you wanna follow along, you can feel free to copy paste this whole little script here and then uh, pop it in, you know, name it demo, and then you can just run it. But yeah, it's mostly just comments here. And uh, by the way, before we even get into this, you know, I just don't wanna take credit for like inventing the solution. So I did find this on, uh, whatever, askubuntu.com here. You can see poking around this stupid cookie dialogue here. But yeah, you know, someone wrote that here and uh, we're kind of going to break it apart, run it, check it out and see how it works. But um, 
yeah, before we get pretty deep in the woods here, you know, this little script ignoring this uh, custom pseudo function here, you know, there's other patterns here. I've done videos about this in like a make script video that I made here. But uh, yeah, the, the crux of it or the meat and or the exact specific use case here is we're just using pseudo here to copy this demo script that we're just creating here to use a local bin. Now, of course, you know, I go on to say here that this is going to copy the demo script to here. And now you can, you know, basically just run demo to run it. And yeah, we're going to go over details in a second here. But this is meant to be like for demo purposes, right? Like when you install a real tool like kubectl or cd, like other different tools there, you know, that may or probably will involve down curling something potentially from GitHub if you want to get the latest version there, you know, assuming you're not using a package manager or whatever. Maybe you unzip them and then you just move their binary to user local bin. So, you know, this script gets rid of the curl and unzipping and, you know, all that out of the process here, but and it just copies the file to here. And that's exactly what we want to do in the end for the real install script. So yeah, we are good to go there. And then it just echoes hello world just to let us know that, hey, like something actually happened here. But yeah, let's go over uh, this pseudo function here a little bit. And it begins with this or condition here, right? And it's going to check to see if the effective user ID, which is the EUID, we're going to see if that is zero or not. And uh, yeah, let's start popping into the terminal here because it's going to be a little bit easier to see how, they, how these things work. So I've done some videos in the past around UIDs, like running Docker as a non-root user, you know, but uh, I just want to let you know, like, you know, these are the outputs of some of these uh, environment variables that are available to you when using bash or in your shell. Well, in this case, I think UID and EUID are bash specific, although they, they will work in Z shell and other bash compatible shells. But we can see in this case, the user ID is a thousand, the uh, effective user ID is also a thousand. I found in practice that uh, these always appear to be the same. You know, let us know in the comments below when these actually really will be different because, you know, I Googled around for this one and, and there are some cases where it's like, yeah, if you use like, you know, privilege escalation with sudo, then, you know, these could theoretically be different. Um, I have not found them to be different in any cases that I've developed, but who knows? In any case, the effective user ID feels like it's the, the better variable to use in this case. And, um, Let's say though the effective user ID is zero. In this case, we just saw that it's a uh, thousand because this is the nick user. But let me actually run uh, as the root user here and see what those values are now. So if we do UID and EUID here, we're gonna see that uh, the value is zero. This is normal. This is normal Linux things here, right? I'm the root user, my UID is zero. So this condition then is going to fire off to be true. And you know, since this is an or, it's gonna short circuit and this will just evaluate to true. And then we just move on to the next part of the script here, which is basically just you know uh, running whatever arguments you pass into the function here. This would be, uh, yeah, whatever the command was, but what without sudo, right? Because remember, when you run sudo like this, it's not running sudo from your file system uh, to wherever sudo happens to be installed to, right? Like if I do a which sudo, you can see it's gonna be somewhere like user bin sudo, right? Uh, this is not running that binary, it's running this function here. And uh, this function is gonna be like, okay, well, you know, you are the root user, cool, let's do this, but what is this? Well, in this case, um, you know, at the at symbol there, dollar at, is just gonna return this, literally all the arguments passed into the function. So it's gonna uh, run the command without sudo, which I think is pretty neat. So it gives us a way to kinda, you know, abstract this uh, thing out here so we don't need conditions all the time to be like, you know, if UID or EUID is zero, like we don't have to repeat that if condition 12 times if you have 12 tools that you're installing here. So, you know, this is basically the case where uh, are the root user, and then you can short circuit out here, right? This is the Docker use case essentially. And, you know, we went over here like EI, the EUID is effective user. I kind of like to use that one other than dollar sign user because I mentioned here too that uh, dollar sign user isn't always going to be available in most Docker images. You know, I tend to set that and I've done videos in the past where I think it's a good idea if you're building an image that uh, you should set this one. But um, yeah, like EUID and UID, those are just bash specific things. You know, you will find them to be available in every Debian based um, or Debian slim based image. You know, I can't speak for every variant. And of course, I don't know, maybe someone could like do something crazy and unset those. But you know, if you use the efficient ones, you can count on them being there. Um, but yeah, then now let's talk about the more interesting condition again, which is like the or condition of this one. And this is uh, where you are potentially running this on your dev box, right? So otherwise, we're going to take some arguments you pass into the function and then run it through the pseudo command, blah, blah, blah. We're going to break this down. Don't worry, because it's a little bit funky. Um, but yeah, this is the personal machine use case, and it's the other side of the or condition here. Uh, but yeah, before you start running this one, command is a bash command to execute or display information about a command here. And we're using set to pass our arguments to uh, the actual command function here. And this is actually going to be hard for me to even describe because it is also not like 100% in my mind here. So I'm going to do my best here and maybe we can play around with this thing and just see how it works a little bit. And then someone who actually knows what's going on here can 
uh, make a better comment in the comments to really describe how this goes here. Um, but yeah, we're going to be focusing just on this part here. So let's actually just run this thing first of all, right? So yep, it's running hello world there. And then if I do a which demo, then we would expect that to be user local bin here demo. Why? Because we just literally copied this demo script to user local bin and then it echoes hello world and it's all there and it, and it worked. Nice. Uh, and we didn't need to run the script with sudo. Why? Because this is actually going to end up being run with sudo. And I have passwordless sudo enabled on my WSL2 instance. So we didn't get prompted for a password. But, you know, if you do have a system where that is not set up, then, you know, when you run the script, it would actually prompt you for your password there to put it in here. Let's just try experimenting. Like, what happens if we don't pass all the arguments over into here? Well, also, I should mention too, like, you know, the dollar sign at, right? This is going to just pass in all the arguments here. And, and that, that's why that works. So, okay, let's see how that works here. So we just, you know, do that and then rerun this here. And now we get a situation here because, you know, if you were to run sudo with no arguments as well, you know, this is the use case here, right? Like we can't just run sudo like this. You have to put in some form of arguments there that works like that. But then it's like, well, what happens if you decide that uh, you're not going to use set dash dash? Like, can't you just use command here? Because it's like, well, we're going to use command to pass in, uh, you know, this sudo function or sudo command to run and then we're going to pass in all the arguments to there and that should just work, right? No, it won't uh, because now it's like actually not even running a sudo. Um, but yeah, this is where it gets a little bit funky in my mind here. So all I know is like you need to put set dash dash here and then things work. Horribly explained, I know, but like it's one of those things where you put this in and it works. If you don't put this in, then it doesn't work. Um, but that's basically how things work here. And, you know, we can actually confirm it works in Docker as well because if we take this command here and we'll go over it more once we're looking at here, uh, yeah, hold on, I didn't copy that to my clipboard apparently. All right, there we go, cool. So now we should see a hello world back there. And you know, we're just running a container here, interactive, technically didn't need it because we're not really going into a shell, but I just put it there anyways. Yeah, we're gonna remove the container. Then we're gonna set up a volume here for the current working directory, right? If I do PWD here, you know, this is uh, my tutorial directory here for a couple of videos here. We're gonna mount that into slash app, set the work door to slash app. We're gonna use the official Debian bookworm slim image here. Bookworm is uh, Debian 12, latest stable version at the time of making this video. And then we're just gonna run that demo script here. Now, uh, if we can break that down a little bit more, you know, let's just go into uh, a bash prompt here. We can see, you know, there's a demo script there. And, you know, if I run demo, we get hello world. So, yeah, that's how all of that is just working out here. You know, in this case, this is firing off and then this is happening and then this is happening and that's happening and we're good. Totally just works. So that is not too bad. And now let's go back to the blog post here. And yeah, I mentioned that the pseudo function is here, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we went over this before around just like, you know, installing real tools. But yeah, what's kind of neat about this approach in general is that, uh, you know, on your personal system, it's going to work and it'll either prompt you to enter in your password or just passively work there if you have passwordless pseudo enabled. You know, you kind of don't need to litter your script with a whole bunch of uh, different if conditions here to check to see if like the pseudo command exists. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a problem in my opinion, at least for maintainability, if you're doing this to install 10 different tools, right? And this install script is uh, installing quite a bit of tools in the real world here. And then on systems without sudo, right, such as Docker, it's just going to run the command without sudo and kind of just work there uh, if it's being run as the root user. Kind of gives us the best of both worlds there, right? In the sense that it runs the same in both cases. You know, the downside though is you need to internally use sudo within your script every time uh, you actually need that, like, you know, to, to write to this directory or copy to that directory there. And it also feels like uh, it's a little bit anti-user in behavior, right? You know, there's this idea of you can just run the script without sudo and then it's like it is using sudo internally. So like what's to stop the script from, I don't know, modifying something in, in a bad way? Maybe it's like removes that directory there. You know, you kind of don't want to have a script do that unless you explicitly call it with sudo, you know? Uh, but yeah, okay, let's get to that. I think I get into that a little bit later anyways. But there could be another way to maybe handle this uh, depending on your use case, right? So. If you invoke a command with sudo, then you actually get access to this sudo user environment variable uh, that'll be set to the user who invoked the command. Now, I didn't set up a code sample here. We're actually going to jump in and kind of see how this works in a sec here, but let's just like read this out here first. And this could let you avoid, right, needing to use, um, needing to override sudo like we did above, and also avoid using sudo in your script. You know, instead, you'd basically just run the script itself with sudo, like the first option that we talked about up here, right? You can kind of just run it with sudo, and then you are good to go. And uh, let's go back to here. You know, so yeah, the basic idea here, right, is if sudo user is undefined, then we know the script was run without sudo, so we can expect it's the root user. You know, this would kind of be the case where things are running in Docker, but of course, you know, it's not limited to Docker in that case. But if this environment variable is set 
then we can expect it's your personal box and you use sudo there. And then things will just install to here, no problem, because you're acting as the root user. Because again, you know, going back to up here, you know, you ran this, the script actually like that. And then I go on to say here, well then for local bin here, you can pip install commands or user or whatever else you need to do as a non-local user. And then you can just use the su command like switch user to switch to this uh, sudo user before you actually run that command here. So yeah, now let's uh, make this thing a little bit easier to read here. So I'm just gonna cancel out most of the script here, but let's do something like, you know, like we mentioned before, we can do uh, echo user, cool. And let's also echo the sudo user as well. And if we run the script here, then we will get, well, oh yeah, it's getting undefined. That's fine uh, because I have no one set here set, but let's default to that just so we get nothing, right? So in this case, I ran the script and I didn't run the script at sudo. So sudo user is going to be undefined. However, if I run this with sudo like this, then sudo user is actually the user who is running the script here, who invoked the script with the sudo command. So you can see my current user now is Nick and we can see that being uh, output here as well. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Like that is a pretty good pattern. I kind of like this one a lot. And uh, well, now you might be thinking like, well, what method or method should you use here? And I don't know, like most things, right? Uh, kind of depends on your use case, right? The first uh, option is ideal in my opinion. If all you have are system-wide installs to uh, or system-wide tools to install, right? Like if all you're doing is doing stuff like this, where you're just moving stuff to use a local bin, then again we go back to the first option here. We just run it with sudo when you need to. Otherwise, you don't in Docker and you're good to go. 100% done. So let's go back to down here. Yeah, if you have a lot of locally installed tools mixed in then I think the second option is more maintainable since you only need to define that sudo function we went over there once. And then the rest of your script can kind of just use sudo as normal. And then uh, you kind of just don't need to think about it much beyond that, right? So the idea there is like if you've got, I don't know, eight different sudo enabled uh, commands that you want to run where you need to write to use a local bin, but you've got, I don't know, 15 or 10 or however many local uh, pip install commands or whatever else that you need to do in, a, in the you know local user's uh, home directory or whatever, then yeah, this option doesn't feel too bad at all. But um, if you only maybe have a small handful of locally installed tools, maybe like one or two or whatever, then I do feel like that third option here with the sudo user one, sudo user one is, uh, I don't know, it feels a little bit more correct, right? And I think it also really depends on where the script is being used. You know, if it's internally within an organization where everyone is being onboarded in the same way, um, that's a little bit different than a script, I think, that's uh, just open source and available, right? You know, and I go on to say here too, right, like personally on a moral or ethical level, you know, I really do like option three the best because this shows the most clear intent that your script needs root privileges before you actually run it. You may also want to consider splitting out your logic into separate scripts to differentiate, you know, what needs and doesn't need root access. You know, that's another option too as well. You know, this starts to get a little more complicated though if you happen to have multiple scripts doing different things, but then you have kind of a parent script that calls both, but then you're back to like in prefixing the word sudo in, you know, that parent script to call the other script and maybe you don't solve the problem in that way. But again, you know, if you don't have that scenario, then, you know, maybe this works here. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say here, I actually did end up rolling out option two for a client because in their specific use case, it made the most sense there. But the good news is, you know, if that changes or maybe I want to rethink that in the future, uh, I can just change that implementation. You know, in the grand scheme of things, this isn't a big deal at all. And user stuff doesn't change, you know, now they just run the script at sudo and it uses option three there. So yeah, I'm kind of curious, like what method would you prefer to use there? And again, maybe go over the use case that you would use it in, or maybe there is a case to always use three and never two, right? Who knows? Yeah, with that said, let us know in the comments below what you thought. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.